see you. Get out of my way. There's a small gym, buddy. I'm gonna find you. I got gotcha. you, McCall. Come here. If you guys are ever having a really bad day, just remember that you have some pretty shit Call of Duty Zombies hot takes. Let's get into it. Dead of the Night is an underrated map when you play it a lot. I mean, I don't really like Dead of the Night, and I've always viewed it as being the Zetsubo of BO4, where it's just like a love it or a hate it map, there's not really anything in between. I really appreciate the effort towards it, bringing like old school classic horror vibes into a pretty old zombies game, like it was 9 years old at the time, 8 or 9 years old. I think that those aspects worked really well, but the map just doesn't play very well for me. It doesn't flow very well, I don't really like the easter egg. The boss fight against the werewolf is pretty cool, but like the individual fights against him aren't the best. And obviously you have the catalyst zombies and the Nosferatu weighing the map down. This kind of carries over from the last one, Dead of the Night and Zetsubo are criminally underappreciated maps. I think Zetsubo is actually kind of underappreciated, like yeah it's on the complicated side in comparison to, you know, Shadows and Dorizon Drac, and obviously the map launched in a pretty poor state. However, once all the glitches were fixed and the dust would, had settled, the map was pretty good. Definitely more on the complicated side, and it was a bit tedious here and there, but it had two pretty cool boss fights, admittedly the Takio one wasn't very fun, but it had pretty good story elements, and it definitely made Takio a likeable character. Although the same can't really be said for Dead of the Night in my opinion. Moon suffers from the same issues as Transit. I'm gonna break these down, so annoying special enemies, I kind of agree with this, the teleporting Nova Crawlers are pretty cancerous, and the astronaut is a bit of a knob, although in Black Ops 3 this was sorted, you know, you can dead insta-kill him with dead wire, so that is not as big an issue on BO3, and I think the enemies despite this were still better than the enemies on transit. I don't think the map has a bad pack-a-punch system, it's just run around the map. It's kind of like Buried's Pack-a-Punch, you just run from one end of the map to the other. I don't think it's nearly as bad as Transit's, and I think that the map layout of Moon honestly is pretty good. The problem is, is just the excavators can kind of screw up the map layout, and also you have to go from one end of the map to the other to get Pack-a-Punch, which is a bit of a ball ache. However, I wouldn't say that these issues are nearly as bad as the issues on Transit. Deadshot is actually a pretty good perk. No, I think this is pretty untrue. Even if you're on console, it just doesn't really do that much. Like, it makes your weapons a bit more accurate. That's kind of it. Obviously, in Black Ops 1 to Black Ops 3. In BO4, it was slightly better, but the modifier was just massively outclassed by others. And then Cold War actually made Deadshot really good. However, it was far too different to the original Deadshot. So, Cold War's Deadshot is fantastic. Every other version, not very good. The map exclusive weapons should have been released in every other Zombies game. Yeah, I 100% agree. I think that they definitely gave each individual map its own charm. Like, hey, you really like using this weapon? Well, chances are you'll like this map as it's the only one it's featured on. But I kind of agree. I think that that's kind of what held Black Ops 3 back as well. Each individual map had their own unique weapons, but I think the game would have just been way better if all the weapons were on all the maps. Like, maybe when Origins came out, like, it made all of the weapons backwards compatible. Kind of like what Moon did with Mule Kick, if those maps did the same with the guns. I think that would have been quite cool, but it didn't, unfortunately. Cold War is underrated as hell, and older Zombies players don't understand it. I mean, I would agree with this. I mean, it's definitely way different from, like, the classic Zombies. And, you know, whenever you put, like, Cold War against Black Ops 1 or anything, usually Black Ops 1 will win the polls. However, I would agree. I think the only thing that holds Cold War back is just the map quality. But, like, the game itself is very fun, and the movement is really, really good especially within the context of it being a COD Zombies game. Director's Cut is the most rewarding achievement in Zombies history? Yeah, I 100% agree. It's not even a hot take, it's literally just fact. Like, it completely changes the game in such a massive way, and it is a hell of a reward for slugging through Beast from Beyond, beating Mephistopheles, and unlocking Director's Cut. 
It's fantastic. Mawa de Toten is one of the greatest zombies maps ever made. I would honestly agree. I think Mawa would be in my top 15, maybe top 10 at a push. I really like the city aesthetic. You know, it kind of felt like pretty much every zombies game has like a city map, you know, transit, shadows of evil, that sort of thing. And Age and um, Mawa de Toten was Cold War's city map. But I did really like the individual aspects. I think the boss zombies were really good. The Valentino boss was not quite as good as Legion, but still pretty good. Cerberus, the best weapon, best Cold War wonder weapon, hands down. You had some things like Klaus as well, like the stopping the train easter egg fit cutscene was fantastic. Really, there is a lot to love about Mauer the Totem, and it is my favourite map in Cold War, and one of the best maps overall. Zombies in Spaceland is the best map ever created. I think the map is very underrated, and I think it's easily the best map in the game, and possibly, you know, a top 5 or a top 10 map. But to say that it's the best map ever made, I don't agree with that. I don't think it's as good as Shadows or Derizendrak or Origins. I think it's definitely up there. However, it's just not as good as those masterpieces for me. Bad guns in the box make spinning the box more fun. Uh, no, it doesn't. It just means that you're left frustrated when you die on round five because the box gave you a crap gun. I don't really understand this point, to be honest. I think that we all really want fun overpowered weapons so giving us a crap weapon is just gonna make it feel like the box stole 950 points off us. I don't even know if I should say anything else about this one like my reply back basically says it all. People who are stuck in the past just don't appreciate you know the goats that modern zombies offered you know Black Ops 3, the latter half of BO2, even some of the goats in the non-Treyarch games and playing Kino de Toten 24-7 or Doris or anything like that, it just blinds you to the amazing maps that we got in re more recent years. Speed Cola is pointless in Cold War and in Black Ops 3. Okay, I'll break them down game by game. In Cold War, it's nowhere near as good in terms of reloading. However, it has quite a few other effects, such as making your field upgrade recharge faster, rebuilding barriers faster, and hitting the box faster. So even if you don't use it primarily for reloading faster, it has quite a few other abilities, so I would disagree here. And in Black Ops 3, it's a waste of a perk slot. No, not really. It's easily better than Double Tap 2.0. There's quite a lot of weapons that don't have access to fast mags, such as the map-specific weapons and obviously the wonder weapons. So Speed Cola is actually quite necessary for those ones. So I would say that this is a pretty big hot take, bordering on not true. People overrate Cold War Zombies. If anything, I think the game's underrated. I mean, I'm not saying it's a masterpiece or anything, like it's not the best Call of Duty Zombies game ever made, but I think that to say that it's worse than some of the old ones is just blasphemy. Like, Cold War is genuinely a lot of fun, especially Especially with friends. It's definitely very different, so I understand if you don't like it for, you know, the individual mechanics. I can understand that. But if you take the game for what it is, it's genuinely a lot of fun, and way more fun than some of the older games. I don't really know what to make of this one, it just sounds like you're a Black Ops 3 hater. If you don't like the base weapons, I could 100% understand. They do lack identity, especially when you add attachments. But to say that you refuse to play any map on that game without a weapon mod, yeah, you're a BO3 hater, sorry. Cold War and Black Ops 4 are polar opposites, and a hybrid game of the two would be the best zombies ever. I agree with the polar opposites, where I think BO4 had, you know, a lot of potential, but it was kind of ruined by the mechanics, and Cold War had really good mechanics, but just not that great map quality, like the maps were just kind of meh, kind of above average, but not really in the spectacular realms. But I think a hybrid of the two wouldn't be the best game ever. Like, I think if you took Black Ops 4 maps and Cold War mechanics, you would still have, like, four maps in Black Ops 4 that weren't all that good. And I'm not entirely sure the mechanics of Cold War would blend well with BO4 maps. I understand what you're saying, and I think it would be a very cool game to experience but I don't think it'd be as good as BO3. Once again, like, my reply back to this message basically says it all. I'm not entirely sure how you can say that BO3 disgraced the casual fan base when it has Revelations, Derizendrak, Shadows of Evil, The Giant, and Chronicles all in the same game, as well as when games like BO4, BO1, like, Vanguard, like, these games exist. Like, BO4 has super sprinters, 
and the elixir system is not as casual friendly as Gobblegums. Yet you're saying that BO3 is less casual? Like, how the hell does that make sense? Not to mention, BO3 literally has some of the easiest high rounds in zombies. Like, easier than BO1, easier than BO2. So I really don't understand this point. It just sounds like you didn't play it very much. Black Ops 2 isn't the best zombies? Yeah, I 100% I agree. The game is kind of hit or miss, and the mechanics haven't aged all that well. It has a couple of S-tier maps, like Buried, Mob, and Origins, and it also has some pretty underrated maps like Die Rise and Nuketown. But then you have some pretty crap maps like Farm, Bus Depot and the infamous Transit and yeah I would agree it's not quite the best zombies. It has amazing maps and it has amazing content but it also has its fair share of shit content. Outbreak is the worst zombies game mode ever. Okay, say that you haven't played Grief or Turned without saying you haven't played Grief or Turned. Not to mention Cold War, whilst I do love the game, it does have its fair share of crap game modes, such as Cranked, that crappy little snowball game mode. I can't remember the name and I cannot be asked to research it, but you know what I mean, like Outbreak is actually really fun. Granted, it's different and it would turn a lot of people off, but to say that it's the worst game mode ever in Zombies, there's just no shot. What do we have here? The Thunder Gun sucks and isn't that fun to use. I mean, they're not that fun to use thing. I mean, that's entirely subjective. Like, if, it, if you don't like it, you don't like it. Even though I personally get a laugh out of ragdolling the zombies. But to say that the Thunder Gun sucks is just wrong. The fact that it has, you know, infinite damage automatically makes it better than like 80% of the Wonder Weapons. And it can kill an entire horde in one shot, which which is incredible. Not to mention it has pretty good ammo for a weapon of this caliber, you know, having 28 shots when packer punched. So, no, I don't understand this point. Like, the Thunder Gun's amazing, and if you turn around and say you prefer the Tundra Gun, then we're gonna have words. Origins is overrated and relies too heavily on the staffs? No, I disagree with this. Especially in BO3, you can just use double Packer Punch. Doesn't really make much of a difference. And the game isn't heavily reliant on the staffs. You can just get, like, the Mauser Packer Punched. Reliably deals with the Panzers. They arrive too early to effectively deal with. I mean, that just sounds like a skill issue, to be honest. The mud makes it more difficult. No, it makes it more tedious. Get, let's not, you know, don't get difficult and tedious mixed up. The upgrading process for the staffs is too cryptic. It really isn't. You just have to look at Google, like, if you're really not that sure. It really isn't that bad at all, and your complaints kind of sound like you're just not very go good at the map. Now, holy shit, this is a classic hot take if I've ever seen one. The Olympia is better than the M14. I mean, it clearly isn't, though. Like, the Olympia does more damage against, like, certain enemies, but aside from that, the M14's better in every way. Better at earning points, more ammo, fire faster, faster fire rate, pretty sure it reloads faster has more range, obviously, with it being a rifle as opposed to the Olympia being a shotgun. No, M14 gang all the way. This isn't a debate. Shadows of Evil is the best Black Ops 3 map. I mean, I think, pretty sure this video was dedicated to hot takes and not facts, but okay. I'll include it anyways, I guess. We need more Extinction. I, I think Extinction is a very controversial game mode, especially when compared to Zombies. I don't think it had nearly the same replay value, even with, you know, the teeth system, you know, like getting character upgrades and leveling up your classes, all that good stuff. I don't think the game, even with this, had the same replay value. So even if we did have Extinction, it would basically just be like, you play it once or twice and you don't play it again for six months. So I think I'm happy with with the extinction that we already have. Black Ops 2 and Black Ops 1 zombies suck and the other COD zombies have better maps. I mean, if you're including the non-Treyarchs, then this is probably the worst hot take of them all. Because to say that the non-Treyarchs, like, I think that especially in, like, Exo Zombies and World War 2 Zombies, the gameplay and the maps just weren't all that good. However, I'll go through BO1 and BO2. BO1, I think it does suck. Like, the game is not the worst in the world, but it's not the best either. It's just the most mid-Zombies game. Black Ops 2, by no means the best. However, to say that the other COD Zombies games have better maps than Buried, Mob, and Origins you know, debatably top five maps, it's... I don't really know if I agree with that. Might want to sit up in your chair for this one. We've got a Cold War hater saying that literally pretty much all of those zombies games are better than Cold War. Black Ops 2, I kind of agree with. BO3, obviously. Infinite Warfare, it has some maps that are better, but the game overall isn't as good in my opinion. BO4, potentially. However, the last game, Black Ops 1. 
<sighs> I'm tired of saying this. Black Ops 1 is a mid-game that has not aged all that well, and there is no point in playing it in 2023. It is not better than Cold War. Stop living in the past. Kino is the worst Treyarch Zombies map since Black Ops 1. I don't think Kino is a very good Zombies map, but to say that it's the absolute worst Treyarch Zombies map? Ah, uh, that's a bit too far. It's not as bad as Bus Depot or Farm. Transit's worse. I don't know, like, I, I don't even think it's in the bottom 5 uh, Treyarch Zombies maps, or even in the bottom 10. It's by no means a spectacular map, but to say that it's the absolute worst? Fucking hell. Buried is garbage. I mean, if you don't like Buried, that's fine, but to say that the map design is practically a straight line, it, I mean, I think your learning curve is a flat line, good sir, because if you look at the actual map layout, it's anything but a straight line. You know, you have the different tunnels, you have twists and turns and all the rest of it. It's not a straight line at all. Like, I don't agree with this at all. Like, say if it's say it's boring and tedious, that's absolutely fine, but making a factually inaccurate statement about the map design, like, what the fuck, dude? Black Ops 3 is overrated and Black Ops 4 is underrated. Black Ops 4 is quite underrated, I agree with that. It's by no means the best game ever, but to say that it's in, like, the worst... It's in contention for the worst Zombies game? Yeah, I don't agree with that in the slightest. Black Ops 3 is overrated. No, you're just wrong. Like, it has Shadows, Derizendrak, Rev. People love Garod Krovi, it's not really my thing. And you also have Chronicles, all in the same game. How the fuck can you say that that's overrated? And speaking of Garod Krovi, it wouldn't be a hot takes video if people didn't ride its dick to the moon and back. However, we're not even going to talk about the last part, being on the best map. Obviously that's a load of bullshit, Garod Krovi is not the best map ever made. The Wonder Weapon Mark III comment is what I want to focus on. The best Wonder Weapon ever made. Okay, in terms of damage, no. It's literally just a shit Apothecan Servant, and it's a shitty little laser pistol. It's by no means the best Wonder Weapon ever made. It doesn't do infinite damage, it doesn't have the best ammo, it has a lot of ammo, but it's not the- it doesn't have the most damage, or the most ammo, or anything. There are like five Wonder Weapons off the top of my head I'd say are better, like the Baby Gun, the Apothecan Servant, Ice Staff, Thunderbow. Hell, even the Slickrifier or the KT-4 I'd say is better than this piece of shit. Like, it's really not that good, it'll take you to round 50 pretty well, but then after that it drops off and then you're left up shit creek without a paddle. Damn, you guys really make me out to be a Grod Krovy hater. I'm not, it's a decent map, but it's just not the best in Black Ops 3. But with that being said though guys, I hope you enjoyed the hot takes video as always. Uh, feel free to hit me up on my Twitch, you know, where we do streams, all that good stuff, and you can chat to us live. Uh, have a great rest of your day.